Hello YouTube friends. It's time to look into another suitcase. In fact, today we're going to look in two suitcases and these are the last two suitcases of the whole uh, series. We've looked in all sorts over. Uh, in fact, maybe I'll make a playlist of looking into suitcases and leave a link to that at the end. There's been all sorts in them, uh, but these are the last two and I've kind of I, I know what's in them and I've kind of been avoiding doing them till now <laughs> uh, but I'll move the camera and I'll open these up and you'll be able to see what's inside both of them these suitcases don't belong to me I'll open them up and we'll have a look inside probably somewhere for you to sleep Which one shall we do first? This one. When I was clearing out my mum's things after she died, which was uh, three and a half years ago now, I knew what was inside these suitcases. Lots of her unfinished work. So there's um, some wadding here, batting, wadding, loads of wadding. And then lots of her uh, unfinished work. So this will be the edging of the uh, hexagon quilt that she was making. Here, look, there are loads of these. She would sit of an afternoon and just sit in the conservatory while my dad had a nap and sew these little hexagons and then stitch them onto these pieces here that obviously she had an idea that she was going to sew them together into a quilt and that's the border for it and she's hand stitched all of that and look ah so there's quite a lot of that one done so I could finish that couldn't I because my idea here is to see how far mum got with all of these and finish them. So that's all one quilt there. But then there are some finished quilt tops in here and in here. And so what I'm going to do today and then isn't it lovely when you see the handwriting of someone you love. King size washed that says. And what's this? This is just, um, this is quilt backing, right? That's just a big piece of quilt backing that she's washed and it's king size. So that's good to know because of a plan that I have with some of the other things that I'll find in here. What's in here? I haven't looked in these since, um, uh, mum used to knit, um, this is the same sock pattern that I, in fact, I think I got her into sock knitting she always used to sock knit, but then just latterly. Oh, that's nice. Um, she, I got, I got her back into sock knitting and she made socks for my dad. And there, look, that's the cuff of one. And the needles and the rest of the wool is here. So... It's a pretty unpromising colour, but I think what I may do, I'll put those to one side and I might finish those. There's only one cast on and um, and we have different tensions. She, she's quite a tight knitter, I'm quite loose, but then it's a sock, you know. So I might, um, yeah, there's the sock yarn label there. What I might do then is put that to one side and finish those socks and give them to my dad. And now we're going to get into the quilt tops. 
there's a finished quilt top. There's another small one, another, and another. There's four. And then in this suitcase here, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight quilt tops. And what I thought we would do is have a look at each one because I have a plan for these. Now, I wonder if you remember, I'll leave an iCard if I can remember or a link at the end of the video to the uh, the time I went to visit Kath, who's the Cumbrian long arm quilter. And she uh, quilted, machine quilted the red and pink scrappy quilt that I made beautifully. She did it absolutely beautifully. And I went to her workshop in Cumbria and I think I probably annoyed her a little bit because she was very busy doing a very complicated quilt and I was asking all sorts of interesting questions about the things I was interested in. But anyway, Kath has moved now. She's just over the border in Scotland, which is actually nearer for me. So I got in touch with her and I asked her how she would feel about finishing these quilts for me. And she very kindly, she said she would, and she very kindly invited me to take them rather than send them. So I thought I had five, but I've got eight <laughs> and this one. So I've got eight quilt tops. We're going to have a look at them all one at a time. In fact, what I thought I'd do is pin them up on the design board so that we can look at each one and look at my mum's work. And Kath very, very kindly is going to uh, let me visit her and show her these quilts. And we're going to discuss what kind of pattern she'll quilt onto each one. She's going to provide the wadding. I'm going to find the backing for them. And then what I plan to do with them all is make sure that each family member gets one of my mum's quilts. Uh, it might take a while for this to all come to fruition because I'll get them back and I'll have to bind them all, won't I? Uh, and you know hands bind them all eight quilts plus I've, I've got quite a lot of other things on the go at the moment <laughs> but that's what I'm going to do now I'm going to pin mum's quilts up on the design board one at a time so that we can have a look at them and see what she was making and I think isn't this the way with quilters we love the the quilting part but sometimes, I mean, I quite like the finishing of it. I like pinning it out and hand quilting it. It's almost like one of my favourite parts is hand quilting. But uh, obviously it wasn't mum's. <laughs> and um, although she was very prolific and we've all of us got all of her quilts and she would give them away and all of that. But she obviously liked, like all of us, do, do you do this? Or you're making a quilt and you've got the next one in your head oh yes I think it would be nice to do this fabric like this now there's eight quilts here I'm going to pin them up, up on the board and we'll have a look at each one and then potentially nine because there's this one that I'm somehow or other going to have to try and finish but this is a lovely one and you know I'm going to hand quilt this one I won't take this to be uh, machine quilted because this is all hand done so I'm thinking if I put that wadding back in there that might be a nice place for you, Norma. What do you think? Mum and Dad used to have cats. But not latterly. They didn't have cats in the last few years. OK, so we'll put that one in there and cover that up so that Norma doesn't sleep directly on that with all this lot here. And then we'll do some pinning up. OK. For no good reason. This is the first one. I don't know what order she made these in. This is the first time I'm seeing these quilts. And this is a fantastic log cabin. I really like the bold um, contrast between the colours. It's a funny shape because one of the things I'm going to do is measure it so that I know how big the backing needs to be and also what colour. So I'll make notes.
so yeah i'll make notes that one's 80 inches wide and 80 inches long and 61 inches wide so this is the log cabin 80 by 61 okay that's lovely <laughs> this is the next one it's quite a pastely one this this is small really small one and it's a nice pinwheel let's pop up this pinwheel i'm just going to pop it up on top so we can have a look at this one ah. That's almost like a cot quilt or a baby quilt, isn't it? So let's see how big that one is. Forty by forty-six. So that's she's done that in rows of the same pinwheel. That was quite a quick, easy one, I think. That one. Let's try this one now. This is another big one. Oh, this is nice. Okay, let me pin this one up. That's a lovely spring-like quilt, isn't it? And so she's got a, what's she got going on here? Uh, like a checkerboard here, a bit like a St. Louis 16 patch. And then she's just snowballed the corners of this block here and put them together makes that little secondary bit there but it makes for a really light quilt what should we call that one um, i'm gonna call what should we call that one i like the border she's done a nice break here and then a border there so i i'll quilt i'll uh the binding for that one will be this color and i'm gonna have to get the bindings as well aren't i so we'll call that one um, pink and cream, pink and cream. I'll know which one it is, pink and cream. And this one, oh, it's a daisy. Sixty-five by sixty-eight. Okay, loads more to go. This one now this one's um, a string piece one in fact she must have made this one fairly recently because I recognize this fabric here and this this was the um, now I'm, I will definitely leave a link to that uh, video where we did a swap where I gave her um, a fat quarter pack that I liked and I kept one that she would like and we made a quilt for each other and there's, I made a video about that. And so I recognise all of these as the uh, fabrics from those two uh, fat quarter bundles that she's used here. There is another. It's very odd that just fell out. Maybe she didn't finish it. Or maybe she did. Well, this is another long, thin one. Uh, it seems to be longer than it is wide let me see if i can pin this one up it's a bit like the string piece quilt that i made a while ago but i'll tell you what my thinking about this is it's a bit long and a bit narrow so i'm wondering if if I took off maybe two runs there and put another run on the end, I think that might actually square it up better because it's a funny size at the moment. Let's see what size this one is. So that one's 58. We'll call this um, strip pieced. 58. 
I remember, I, re I remember her making this one. Yeah, I do. I remember this one <laughs> because it was when I just discovered that string uh, strip piecing, probably from Bonnie Hunter, um, on paper. And uh, I was, I used to, you know, experimented a bit by doing it on paper. So I showed her how to do it. She wasn't having any of this. She wasn't going to use paper, so she just did it without paper. Worked out fine for her. But I think that's. I think maybe you could leave a comment and see if you agree. It's we've got the. It's fifty eight. Uh, that way, but how long is it? It's very long. Ow. Tape measure bit me. Let's see how long it is this way. so it's 58 by 85 right well I might have a wee play with that one and as I say just unpick a little I don't mind doing that I don't think mum would mind it'll make for a possibly more useful size quilt we're nowhere near finished yet this is such a lot of work let's look at the next one shall we this is another big one what's this one then I don't remember the, this one. Oh, this one's nice. Okay, let me pin this one up. So this one's quite striking, but again, it's terribly simple. If you break the block down, that's the individual block there. And they're all identical. So it's one block and she's taken a little, so it's been, I wonder how she's done this. That's right. She'll have made a half square triangle here and then snowballed the corner of the half square triangle on every one, which gives you the big scrappy square and the small scrappy square. That's what she did there. And that's a huge quilt. I don't remember her seeing her making that one, but that's a, that's a big one. That's nice. Let's measure that one then. What should we call that? Square and square and square, we'll call it. Square and square. That's nearly square. It's 80 by 76. 80 by 76. Now, all the time I'm looking at these, and for the first time, except for that strip piece one that I do remember her making, uh, I'm thinking about how to, what colour backing to use because uh, I'm going to have to find all the backing for these and also how, what sort of binding because uh, there's no extra fabric for binding in here. Should we keep going? We're nowhere near the end yet. This one's nice. This one's lilac-y and white cream. Oh, this one's lovely. Look at the um, how she's used uh, different tones of cream for this square here, which adds interest. Let's look at this one. This one's quite a small one. Let's get another couple of pins. Okay, so this one is a, a small throw. Uh, this is um, how she made this. I've got a feeling she might have made this up beforehand by doing strip sets and sewing them together and then making these um, scrappy, uh, lovely, mauvey coloured, um, what are they, half square triangles? No, they're not, are they? They're not half square triangles. Well, anyway, she's uh, that scrappy thing, and then repeating it with these um, neutrals, which are all different colours of neutrals. I like that one. With again, with a uh, sort of squares border. So that one might be nice, bound in something like this colour, and maybe with a backing that colour. We'll see how big. What should we call that one? We'll call that um, lilac and cream. 
Let's see how big that one is. 42 by 70, that one. I like, that. I like this. Another one. I think there are two more. What's this one all about? This one feels like another quite big one. Oh, this one's enormous. <laughs> up and down. I'll pin this one up. That one's so big you can hardly see it all. But um, you can see that she's got a centre panel here, which has got this sort of um motif in the middle and then squares all the way around the outside of the same thing but there's we've got this sort of knot thing here in her favorite colors which were uh, purples pinks and lilacs these colors she liked these colors very much what should we call that one we'll call that um Pink. Well, it's not really pink, is it? Um, what should we call that one? I don't know. It's a bit overwhelming, all of this. I don't remember her making this one either. She was always sewing, always. We'll call this one um, Lilac and Green Knot. Yeah, because that's like a knot in the middle, like one of those stylized knots. Lilac and it's kind of green. She didn't like green uh, at all. In fact, there's not much green in any of her quilts, but that's a bit green, isn't it? But it's got mostly <laughs> pink flowers in it. So this one's a biggie. So it's 84 by 65 for that one. And there's one more, which I've been saving to the last. I think this one's going to be amazing. Yeah. Let's look at this one, shall we? Pin this one up. This one then has got little hearts. I wonder if you can see that. Uh, I'll, I'll do a close up and put a close up in here. It's got little hearts, a hand, not appliqued. Are they appliqued? Yes, they actually are. It's turned applique, but she's cut the backs out a lot like I do my uh, window hangings. I don't quite know why she's cut the backs out. Maybe to make it lighter, because it definitely wasn't meant to be hung up against a window or anything. Uh, I don't think it's meant to be quilted. But when you, it's quite striking this one. I think when you look at it through the camera, because it's got almost like a log cabin feel. So got so the the heart in the middle. Uh, how's she done that? Upside down, the right way up, all the way along. So she's alternated those so that the quilt won't have an up or a down. That's quite good. Uh, but then there's this log cabin, lights and darks, which gives it a very striking uh, travel along this way as well. So that one's really interesting. We'll call that one hearts. And I'll just measure that one. Yes, that's square, 62 by 62. And that's all of them, except for the the one that she hasn't finished that I've put in a pile somewhere. And uh, it's a little bit overwhelming having all of those. I, I've known I've as I've been clearing round in the house, I've seen these red suitcases, and I thought I must do something with those red suitcases. But I've never wanted to. I've never wanted to open them up. But I'm really pleased that I have today. It smells of her sewing room.
which is amazing. And what an output. I mean, this is just like a very, very small amount of the quilt she made, but these are the unfinished ones. And so with the sizes that I've got there now, I think I will, with that long thinnish one, I think I will take some of the edges off and make it so that it's a little bit more of a quilt size rather than a long thin size. I think that's one thing I might do. I'll um, Maybe I'll hand quilt this one as well. I don't know. But I'm going to send the rest of them. No, I'm going to take the rest of them up to uh, Scotland uh, and I'll bring you along with me for that if you would like to come uh, and we'll go and see Kath's new studio and we'll talk about the different designs that we might put on here. But what my job is now is to decide on what colour backing they all need and to source that. Uh, and uh, Kath needs it to be four inches bigger all the way round, so eight inches bigger than the quilt, which is why the measurements are good to have. And then um, just, oh, and then there's one more thing that Kath asked me to do with the red quilt that I took. And I always do this now with quilts. She says you need to do a lap of honour. <laughs> I'll show you what I mean. This one that, that fell fell off the board. So when you've got this stitched together, these bits here could come undone quite easily. These are all fine because they're all enclosed in the quilt, but these bits up here could come apart. So what she wants um, people who take quilts to her to do is to just, and on a single layer, just a quarter of an inch from the edge, just go all the way round the outside with just an ordinary machine running stitch. So that'll take me a while to do all of these, but I will do that because it makes it easier when Kath's putting it onto the machine and beginning the quilting that these edges don't all uh, start to unravel. These all look great. Maybe Mum used a really small stitch. Yes, it looks like she did, but I'll go round and I'll do that for her. And so um, I'm just a little bit overwhelmed by all of those. What a lot of amazing sewing. She just, all the time, she was down in her sewing room all the time, uh, cutting bits of fabric and stitching them together, which is what quilters do, isn't it? It's what I do, it's what you do. I know it is. So I've got a pair of socks to finish for my dad. I'll try and get those done. Uh, she's only done the cuff of one, so uh, where is it again? It's a boring colour. She's just done that much, but I can carry on and make him finish his socks for him. That would be a nice thing to do, won't it? Very long rib you've done there, Mum. That's fine, I can do that. And it'll be interesting, maybe I should even put... <laughs> what about putting a row of um, green in there, one row, so that you can see where she ended and I began? <laughs> maybe not they're for my dad okay so that's a bit of knitting then for me to do it's the sock pattern I like so it's going to be easy enough to do and now lots and lots of decisions to make about these quilts the colors of the backing I have to find uh, the type of quilting some of them I'll keep to hand quilt uh, and then binding do you know what might be easier is once I've found the backing for each one is just to bind it in the same fabric as the backing. I think that might be easier because I like to, usually I like to do a scrappy binding on my quilts, but we'll do that. And so that's a suitcase that I've been wanting to look in ever since I started looking in suitcases with you. And I, and I, I go to pick it up and I think, no, no, I'll leave that one for now. We've done it now. I hope you enjoyed that. I've got my work cut out now. I'll show you them all when they're finished, but before that, I'll take you up to uh, Scotland with me and we'll go and meet Kath, but that won't be for a little while uh, because, you know, the, I've got to get all, as I say, the backing and everything. So that'll be in a few weeks time. But yeah, we'll have a little trip out and go and see Kath. Okay, Kath, if you're watching this video, you've got your work cut out as well, haven't you? I'll leave a link to Kath in the description below and also at the end of this video uh, I'll, um, I'll leave the playlist to the red scrappy quilt which is the one that um, I did a, a couple of years ago but I'll also leave the, um, the link to the video 
that where I made my mum's uh, quilt and she made mine. One. So if you've enjoyed it, you know, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. Um, the subscription button's just, let's have a think, where is it? I think it's down here somewhere, <laughs> maybe down there. Uh, subscribe, click the notifications bell so that if ever I do a video that's not on a Sunday evening at seven o'clock, which is when I try to post, then uh, you'll, you'll, you'll won't miss any of the videos at all. Thanks for watching. Take care.